The Maps app brings Apple Maps, which are introduced in iOS 6, to the Mac. In the upper left of the window here, I have this diagonal arrow. Click on it and my current location will be displayed. If this is not working for you, your Mac probably has a cabled internet connection. A Mac can only work out its current location when it's connected via Wi-Fi. So this blue dot is my current location. Double click on it to zoom in. I can keep doing that to zoom in closer and closer. I can zoom out using the minus button here, or pinch two fingers together on my trackpad. I can also zoom with the common keyboard shortcuts, Command plus and Command minus. Zooming with the keyboard will zoom in on the center of the map. Double clicking to zoom will zoom in on where you click. Click and drag to move the map around. Rotate two fingers on your trackpad to rotate the map. To reorient north and south at any time, click the compass button here. In the upper right, I can enter a location. I can enter a specific address, a city, or the name of one of my contacts here. I can also search for businesses using Maps. There's our local Apple Store. And now I'll do a search for movie theaters. A pin is placed at each movie theater, and they're all listed on the right. With the location selected, click the Info button here to see more details, like the phone number, web page, and reviews on Yelp. Right-click on a pin to quickly get directions to or from it, or open a new Maps window centered on that location. Unfortunately, when I do this, the pin for that theater is not retained. But opening a new window like this can be useful when you're looking through multiple locations. Click the X in the search field to clear the results. I'm going to click the My Location button and go back to my current location. Next, I'm going to pull up a map of Chicago. In the top center of the window, I can switch from a standard map to a satellite hybrid view or satellite only. I'll stick with the hybrid map and then click on the 3D View button here. For large cities, the buildings are modeled and shown as 3D objects. Click the Traffic button here and the current traffic is displayed. Orange is moderate, red is heavy traffic. Let's find Buckingham Fountain. There it is. It's already marked on the map as a park. Click on it and I can view information about it. Or at the bottom, add it as a bookmark. This will save it in my Maps app as a bookmark. So if I zoom back to my current location, I can click the Bookmarks button here to quickly return to Buckingham Fountain. Notice that all my contacts with physical addresses saved for them are listed here as well. Back at my current location again, let's go over how to drop a pin.
Let's say I'd like to save the entrance to this park as a location, but I don't know the specific address. So what I can do is drop a pin. Right click on where I want it and select drop pin. Now click the info button and add bookmark. That location is now saved as a bookmark and in the bookmarks list I can click edit and rename it. Click the directions button here and I can enter two locations and get either driving or walking directions between them. The route is shown on the map and in a list. Click each change of direction in the list to zoom in on it. Now let's look at sharing maps. From the share button I can send a location or a set of directions a variety of different ways. From an email or a message to Twitter or Facebook. I can also add a maps bookmark from this menu. A great sharing feature in maps is that you can send directly to your iOS device. So I'm going to send these directions right to my iPhone. I'll pull up my iPhone screen here and send them from the Maps app on my Mac. They appear right away as an alert on my phone. Tap it and those directions are loaded into the Maps app on my iPhone. This can be great for researching a route on your Mac and then sending the one you choose to your phone for guidance while on your way. Starting route, head west on North Prairie Road. 